Our guest, again, is Dotan Segui. He was born in Israel, grew up in Paris, immigrated to New York City in the mid-90s, and he's been living in Los Angeles for nearly 20 years. He's an amazing street photographer. He decided to focus on photography after a successful career in high tech. Let's welcome Dotan. Dotan, great to have you with us again. Thank you, Mark. Always a pleasure to be with you. Street photography, you know, the first question, maybe just unfold it. Like, what's your general approach to a street well, shoot? Maybe, you know, kind of unpack it from. Yeah. And so, as you mentioned, this is something I teach in my, my street master class. But the, the thing that I think oh, there's this um, myth or sort of romantic idea about street photography that, you know, you pick up your, your camera, you go down the stairs or whatever, and you, you're in the street. Um, at whatever time is convenient for you and you start taking photos and it, you know, and it'll be great. You know, there's so many things that are wrong about, about that. You know, I mean, it, it can be a nice experience. I'm not saying it won't be pleasurable, but in terms of um, actually getting results, I think that's where the disconnect is. A lot of people feel like, oh, you know, I'm getting to use my gear and I love to pick out, you know, things that I notice. And, but from that to actually making photographs that stop people in their tracks and really connect with people, I think there, that's where it's hard to make the, the connection. And so what I recommend my, my students do, uh, which is a, for most of the, the people who join the class, it's a complete departure from the way that they're used to shooting. Yeah. Uh, my, what I recommend that they do is really to have a game plan and to approach it much more strategically than that. Uh, and and it, to me, it doesn't detract from the, you know, sense of freedom and the joy of, of ph photographing. It, on the contrary, it really puts you on the mission, which, you know, I, th I think is is very uh, satisfying a yeah. and it gets you result, too. And, and there's a feedback loop there. You know, once you start coming back with results and you're even more motivated and you want to pursue a project and it's this it's this virtuous uh, circle that starts kicking in. So what I mean, let me kind of unpack, I guess, what I mean by yeah. game plan, because there's there's multiple things that are that are tied to that game plan. Um, the first one that I often talk about is to um, be very conscious of, you know, you're shooting street photography for the, the moments and the things that are happening in the street. And you, in, in order to get that, to have the opportunity to witness those moments, you want to be strategic about where you go, first of all, and when you go to those places. Yeah. And so, you know, you can't expect to, you know, like if I went shooting around my neighborhood right now, the best, you know, moment I might be able to catch is somebody walking their dog and looking at their phone. Like it's not going to, it's not going to be not that. super exciting. But yeah. No, no. And, and so I have to be a little more strategic about, well, maybe I need to schedule my shoot for, you know, I personally, my, the place I love to shoot in, when I'm in L.A. is in Venice, as Venice Beach, as uh, many of you know. And the Venice Beach, it depends, you know, it, 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 there's a lot happening there, but there's more happening on weekends yeah. and there's more happening during summer, uh, you know, spring, summer, you know, fall. Winter gets a little uh, a little more dry in terms of you know moments and everything, so I'm always thinking about where um, where in Venice I go and when I go, and in fact I even have it down to a science where before going I always look at the there's a webcam there's actually several webcams that look onto Venice Beach on the boardwalk. Uh -huh. And before leaving my house, I will go online, check out the webcam, and see just how much foot traffic there is right now. Oh, and I, I won't go until the foot traffic has picked up because I know that's when I'm going to get, you know, the best results. So th that's the first part of that game plan that I'm talking about is being strategic about where and when to go down to, you know, making a little um, uh, systems for, you know, for, yeah. you, for you to know, you know, when, when, when and where is the right um, place and time. Now, the game plan is super important because you're absolutely right. If it's just like. Hey, I'm going to wing it and this is going to be, you know, that's not how you write a story. You don't right. wing it with a story. You put an outline there. You know, when I write a book, first thing I do is I, you know, I write my table of contents. So I know exactly where I'm going with this thing. Right. And it's the right. same. You're, you're basically saying the same thing, right? You have a, a direct 
plan to follow. It's not this sort of mystical, well, I hope everything goes right. Yeah, and, and I'm not talking about specifically having a picture in mind or a situation in mind, because you can never, that's the part that's really fun, is you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. And, and you want, you, you, I would say it's actually best not to count on anything or to pre, you know, anticipate to anticipate some a certain uh, picture that you want to take. Or I think you, you know, you should have total creative freedom at that point. Once you're in that, you know, moment that you put yourself where you know it's going to be busy and it's the right time in the right place. Yeah. Um, the one, the things that I, I do like to have a game plan about though is not so much uh, having in my mind which photo I'm going to take because that never works. But more so having a plan for, first of all, my camera settings. I, I have sort of default settings. No, I'm not talking about just the menus. I'm talking about like actual like aperture and, you know, focus distance. And right. I, I know the type of photos and this is very personal. The type of photos I tend to make, I am best off if I'm, you know, I'm, I'm shooting a manual camera. So I have my, my camera on aperture priority. Uh, because I don't really need to control the speed. I have like I have to have it where it's not going to go down further than 250th of a second or so. Yeah. Um, so that it, there's no motion blur um, or, or camera shake. And I always um, set my um, my uh, exposure setting to underexposed by two thirds of a stop because I don't want to lose the highlights. I, I mm -hmm. have a camera where if you lose the highlights, they're gone because I'm shooting in native black and white. So if it's white, it's there's no detail in there and it's not recoverable in post. So I always underexpose everything a little bit. Yeah. And, and then the third thing I do is I set my focus. I have manual focus camera. So I set my lens to focus at about 10 feet, three meters, just okay. around there. Because that's typically, you know, and I'm at F8, uh, aperture eight. So yeah. it's a very, you know, flexible, you know, I, as long as my subject is within like, I don't know, five, six feet to pretty much almost infinity, it, it will be in focus. Right. So, um, and this is the design so that if I walk into that street, I, so in my case on the boardwalk in Venice, and all of a sudden something happens within the right, you know, the distance that I typically should at, all I have to do is press the shutter. I have nothing else to do. Yeah. I, I mean, I just frame it, press the shutter, or try to frame it the best I can, press the shutter, and if there's you know something really quick that happens, I can catch it. Somebody passing on a skateboard with you know pulled by a dog or you know any of these things, I can very quickly get it. Uh, a so woman I, with a big snake around her neck. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So um, and I don't have to start thinking about oh my god, you know, should I put it in on manual mode? And if so, oh, like what's please. the right speed? Like I I don't have any of that. I can just focus on what moment is happening and just just framing it, clicking the shutter, that's all I have to think about. So having that, again, it's part of the game plan, starting out with something, then I can adjust it. I can say, oh, you know, there's this subject, it's not quite, it's a little closer than what I'm usually shooting, so I'm gonna adjust my, my focusing distance, or I don't want as much depth of field, so I'm gonna adjust my aperture slightly. So I can make those adjustments, but I have a starting point that I always know that my camera is set at when I start out. And, and I always come back, if I shoot a scene, I always come back to, okay, do I have it on F8, 10 feet, um, underexposed two thirds of a stop, aperture priority, like I, my camera's always there and I know I can rely on, the next time something happens, I don't have to think, is it in the right mode? It, no, it's always in that mode. And so yeah, that's, 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 that's part of the game plan. You guys listen to this, but this is really, <laughs> like, like this is what, what I consider a really important point with advancing your photography. Bob Holmes says, do not let the camera get in your way. And right. unfortunately, there's a lot of misadvice out there. Like you should only shoot in manual mode and blah, blah, blah. That's such BS because it will get in your way. You'll, you're going to miss shots when you're fiddling with your camera. Exactly Instead right. of having the camera be a tool that you use to capture that creativity. So I'm yeah, with you on that. Yeah, the, the camera to me has what I love about the you know the way I shoot with this camera and the the, the, the way the camera operates is that, and I shoot you know like uh, as you've probably figured out by now and from from uh, Mark's intro, but 
it, it's um, the camera is not there. It's basically just me and the subject, and the camera is a complete afterthought. It's it's yeah. uh, it, it becomes transparent. It, it kind of erases itself, and I think that's the best thing the camera can do for you. It, it really shouldn't be this thing that you're focused on. Um, because if you're focused on the camera, you're not focused on what's happening and, and capturing what's happening. And I think your subject perceives that as well. You know, if they oh, yeah. if they see you doing this chimping kind of thing and you're fiddling, they, it sets off a little bit of an alarm. Like, ah, you know, what's what's this guy doing, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> and, right. Instead of yeah. like, there's another person. In fact, this will be my next question of how you approach people. But we want to disarm any anybody getting like. Oh, well, who's this dude with the camera and what's he doing with it? And, you know, ah, you know, right. so that is my next. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I, I, I see where you're going. The, the, you know, approaching strangers is always, you know, challenging because we're, you know, wired, you know, in our DNA to be afraid of strangers. You know, like yeah. if, you know, it used to be that you would approach somebody and they would like chase you with a... <laughs> <laughs> with some kind of weapon and and you know so you'd have to like you know run for your life and that happened for hundreds of thousands of years so we we're wired for that and so it's hard to get over it but one of the things that makes it easier to approach people is when you project confidence that yes. you you know you you um you know what you like about like what attracts you to them in terms of what you find interesting about them and you can express that to them in a confident way. I love your hat. I love the the way your you know your glasses look. I love your outfit. I love your dog. You know, and you can say it in a uh, heartfelt manner uh, that that is completely you know that comes through as genuine and uh, you know really empathetic and 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 connects with them. And then part of it, as as you mentioned, is being confident about your equipment and having the equipment not be in the way of your relationship with the person. Uh, and, and that makes it a lot easier to photograph them that way. Please subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our new shows. Like the video and please share it and leave your comments. I love hearing from you. And remember to get out and capture your own images of life.